Welcome everyone. We are doing a get ready with me makeup edition. Today I am going to be walking you through step by step of this look. Now let me share that I don't wear makeup every single day. I am perfectly fine going out and about or going and visiting my kids without makeup on. I only do my makeup about two to three days per week and I try to schedule it when something a little bit extra is taking place. And then I also tie it in with a filming day. So for example, today is a filming day and I am going out tonight. So it's a perfect day for me to tie in doing a full face of makeup. If I wear makeup, it typically is a full face because again, I tie whatever I'm doing in with a filming day. I will be sharing some different tips throughout the process so that you could scale this back and maybe not do a full face or maybe you're looking for more of an office look. So I will share some tips where you can make this more appropriate for you. I also believe that depending on our age, our makeup strategy could differ. Uh, the older we get, the more we have to be careful. We don't use as much shimmer and maybe some other products. For example, I don't wear mascara on my lower lashes, and I did years ago. As you get older, you do modify and change things. So I'm going to try to make this tutorial something that everyone can learn something from or benefit from. I am no makeup artist, but I do feel that we become an expert with our own face. So while I may not be a makeup expert for you, I feel that I'm a makeup expert for my own face. I also believe that if you are warm skin toned, you're going to want to stick with warmer shades. And if you're cool skin toned, you're going to want to stick with the cooler tones. I am a cool skin tone person. I am a winter. I look great in colors that are of the winter season. For example, black. Black is a great color for me. Winters look amazing in black. That is the best season for wearing black because it doesn't wash us out like it would a spring or a summer. And maybe even a fall. Fall can get a, a little bit more away with it, but spring and summers can look really washed out in black. Black is very complimentary for me. It's the same with makeup. You want to go with shades that complement your skin tone, your hair color, and your eye color, and I am going to help you with that today. Everything that I use, and I mean everything, will be in the description box below this video, as well as on the corresponding blog post, which is always your top link. If I can't fit everything in the description box below, it's usually better to hit that corresponding blog post link to go to the blog and shop from there. It's always your best place to shop from. So, all right, let's get this full makeup tutorial going. And again, I'm going out tonight, so this is the look that I would typically do. Love everything that I'm sharing with you today and everything that I'm wearing are my go-tos. I'm not a variety girl. I stick with what works, what I love. I don't need three, four mascaras. I don't need all sorts of lip liners. This is pretty much what you see all the time. It's just the going out and filming look. All right, let's get started. I always apply some type of anti-aging cream or something to the lids of my eye before I do my makeup. I'm just using the Skin Medica Rejuvenating Hydrator today. I'm not really picky, but I will have it linked. You will also see that I am whitening my teeth. I always do this on makeup wearing days and I always apply a lip balm prior to doing my makeup. This is the Nivea Milk and Honey. It's a favorite of mine, love this product. I am applying the Clinique Touch Base for Eyes in 10 Canvas. Love this product, used it way back in the day. So happy to revisit it. The other thing is I do my eye makeup before I do my face makeup. It's always important to get any leftover shadow off of your brushes, just in case there's transfer of color. I always go in with a vanilla shade shadow. It's a matte, you can use any vanilla shade, and I apply it over my entire lid. This is like a base for me. You could skip this step. And I just pat it on. One thing that you will notice is I do my eye makeup before I do my face makeup. And the reason that I do that is because if there's any fallout, I don't have to worry about it. I've done it this way for years. 
Then I go into a medium toned shade. This can be any shade, but you want it to be matte. I'm using the one in the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. And I like to carve out the shape of the contour of my eye. Then I go into a darker shadow and I look for a cool tone brown. If you're warm tone, go with a warm tone. And I use more of a defining angled brush, again, to create a shape to my eye. I want to go out a little bit at the sides, but this is where I really pay attention to detail to really accent my eye shape and to carve out the look that I'm, I'm going for. And I always want to have my, my shadow go in an upward motion because our face sags as we get older. So you want everything to be lifted. Then I go in with another brush and again, everything will be linked. And I'm just going to tap it in, make sure you tap off the excess powder. and I just work off of what I was already applying. It's like I'm building off of the base with that darker shadow, just on the outer part. It could be like an outer V, I guess you could say. It's just to give more depth of color. I don't take it all the way in, only on the outer part. Then I take a more wispy brush and I go back into that dark shadow. I don't want it to be packed on too heavily. Again, shake off your brush, tap it off, get the excess off. And this is just to add in some of that darker brown in the outer part. You don't really want to use a dense brush here. You want it to be something really wispy. I love this brush because it really pays attention to detail. When you're choosing your makeup brushes, think about the size of your eye. I have small eyes, so I do use more smaller brushes. This is a small tapered detail brush. Again, will be linked. Now I'm going to go with a little bit bigger brush and I'm gonna go back into that medium shade just to kind of blend everything together. We don't want anything too harsh. I'm big on blending, merging colors together so it looks more natural. A Little bit circular motion in that contour and then you'll see I bring it out. I bring it up and out because we want to lift the area of our eyes. We want to lift everything. Now I'm getting my shader brush and this is going to go into a little bit of a shimmer shadow because it is a makeup look for evening. I'm choosing more of a cooler toned shimmer shadow. You would only want to apply this on the lid and you could go with a matte. and I kind of pat it on. I'm a little washed out, so you're not seeing the color that much. The color is definitely deeper than what it looks like in the video, but I'm just a little washed out. There was a warmer shade that you warmer beauties could use on your, on your lid if you wanted to go with something that was more flattering for you, but this color would look great on anyone. You really want to get it in there. Sometimes you have to pack on more. It's not uncommon for me to do that. And I go pretty much all the way in and I blend it all the way in that front corner, all the way out to that darker shade. From there, I move on to curling my lashes. I do not use false lashes anymore. I used to in the day and did love them. I do use Latisse on my eyelashes. I picked that up at my medical skin spa. So I do have pretty long lashes. Unfortunately, my lashes have no natural curl to them, so I definitely do have to curl them. I'm going to use the Tarte Lights Camera Lashes Mascara today. This is a favorite. And again, everything will be linked.
I curled the lashes prior to mascara. And now I'm going to apply a coat of mascara, really pushing those lashes up. You wanna make sure you get those outer lashes and push them way up. I typically will do two coats of mascara. I do not apply mascara to the lower lashes. After mascara, I will go in and just clean up my brows. I don't actually do my brows right now. I do them a little bit later, but this is when I want to see if I have any hairs that are extra long that I need to trim or if I need to pluck anything. You'll see I'm trimming some long hairs here. And I use little mustache trimmer scissors and just a spoolie. You'll see on this side, I also have some longer ones. I did do microblading a couple of years ago. Didn't have really great results. A lot of it is I use such active ingredients for my skincare that it's just too hard to keep them away from the brows, so they really faded. Now I'll look to see if I need to tweeze any long hairs. I get a lot in the chin area. I have had laser hair removal in between my brows as well as my chin and upper lip, but I still, of course, due to perimenopause, I will get some stragglers that will come in and they're, they're, they're dark and they just really stick right out. So they're very easy to locate. And then I'll check my brows too to see if I need to pluck anything. From there, I move into dermaplaning my face. I've been doing this for a long time. I do have a video where I walk you through step-by-step step how I do it. I'll be sure to link that video in the description box. This will just get rid of any of that peach fuzz or hair. And I will use the same scalpel for, I usually go through about one to two, one scalpel a month. Again, I don't apply makeup every single day, only two to three days per week. And I typically only do this maybe once, maybe twice earlier in the week, later in the week, maybe like every four or five days. I just like it clean. It, 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 it really sets up for a nice canvas when you apply your foundation. Now I take a facial toner, one of my favorite, and I clean up my face really well. I always do have fallout below my, my eyes. That's why I like to do my face makeup after my eyes. If you've never done that, it will be very strange at first, but you'll get used to it. And now I just clean everything up. I, I really work my face over with the toner. And I use an exfoliating cotton round to do this. Love exfoliating cotton rounds and love this toner. You really wanna get up there underneath the eye just in case any fallout. And you can kind of push that shadow up as well. So it's really going in an upward motion. Give the illusion of a lifted look. I always take <laughs> my dirty exfoliating round and I clean my eyelash curler because believe it or not, I do use my eyelash curler later on. Now I'm going to apply that same hydrator that I applied earlier to the lids of my eyes and I'm just gonna apply it underneath my eyes. That's really all I do. I do not put a moisturizer on my face. I just produce too much oil. I have tried everything and I'm not interested in trying anything again. I've got, I've got my routine down to a science, so I only apply below the eyes. On a non-makeup wearing day, I definitely apply moisturizer and SPF. Now we're going to go into my favorite primer by Smashbox. It's the Photo Finish Smooth and Blur. Love this, I've been using it for years. I've gotten away from it to try other primers, but it's one of those things where I always go back. You wanna get it everywhere. I kind of really push it in. I want it to really get into the skin so it can mattify, and be a good base for my foundation. We're going to use the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation today. My bottle's pretty messy. And you'll see I have a beauty sponge here. I will get that beauty sponge wet with warm water, let it get really large before I use it. You will see it's much bigger. I love applying my foundation with a the, with the beauty sponge. I've used brushes as well. There's a great one by Sigma. I go back and forth, but I've been using the beauty sponge for a long time. And then I just dab 
the foundation on. I don't put my foundation over my entire face. I work in areas. And then I take the beauty sponge and I, I blend it in, in a dabbing motion. You don't want to wipe. You want to dab it. You really want to melt it into your skin. I always open my mouth and make sure I get down under the jawline because you really want it to blend into your neck area. Very important. Same thing on the other side. I apply the foundation, dab it in, just working in that particular area. Getting it spread out, and that helps me to see where I need to apply more. That's why I don't put the foundation all over my face first. Finishing up with the forehead, making sure I have every area covered. I do not apply the foundation below my eyes because I will use a concealer down there. I always apply a little bit of foundation to my ears, again, just to blend the colors together. My under eye concealer by Armani Beauty, love this one. I've tried many other ones, but this is my go-to. I'll have the shade that I'm wearing linked. Just dabbing it, coming from the inside corner around below my eye. It's very brightening, love that, love the shade. Always look for if you're a cooler toned, a neutral or a warm. Same with your foundation. I believe this brush is discontinued by Berry Essentials, but I will look for it. Can't be without it. I've had it for years, probably 20, <laughs> believe it or not. And we just work it in. Getting right up underneath. A lot of people don't get all the way underneath, but I do. You really have to find what works for you. Become a master of your own face. That's how I feel. Now I take my middle finger and I dab it in. I really want to melt that into my under eye area. This works really well for me. Pushing it up in there. Moving on to my setting powder, cannot be without the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder, love this. What I do is I actually tap it in the lid. Tap, tap, tap. Then I take a just regular powder sponge and really press it. I press it fast, as you can see. And you can see the powder. I want to merge it in, so I don't wipe. I, I, I don't have luck with a brush. I have to have the sponge to really push it in, but I have oilier skin. I produce a lot of oil, so it's really important. When it comes to your setting powder, you're really gonna to have to find your own technique, and a lot of it will be dictated by your skin type. If you have drier skin, you're probably not going to need as much powder. You probably would want to be careful and you probably could apply it with a brush. But for me, boy, I have to really melt everything together. Moving on to the other side, same concept, really pushing it into the skin really setting that foundation. Now we want to set the under eye area, and I love my Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder, and I use a little brush that's a contour brush. Tapping this in as well, really finely milled. More finely milled than the translucent setting powder for the face. That's why I like this one and prefer this one for the under eye area, tapping that in. You'll want to tap off your excess, and again, kind of tapping it in there, really merging and melting it in. You really want to set that. I just love all the products that I use. Been using most of these for years. Moving on to bronzer and contour. Love this palette by Smashbox. It's a go-to, can't be without it. There's a bronzer shade in there and a contour shade. I use everything in this palette. 
Starting in the middle with the bronzer, I want to give my forehead some color. Make sure you tap off the excess. And I want to give my forehead a little bit of color as if the sun would have hit it. Really focusing on the two sides. I don't have a really large forehead, so I don't really need to do a lot of contour up there. I just like to give it a little bit of color. Really blending that, that bronzer color in. Love this brush. I believe it's discontinued by Target. It's an up and up. That's the problem. I stick with my stuff, so if something's discontinued, I don't go buy something new. Going into the contour shade, I don't do a lot of contour. I have a very narrow face as it is, so I have to be careful if I do too much. It may look like I'm doing a lot, but I do love the look of a contour, though, I will admit. Yeah, there's the contour shade that I'm working with. And I always do the jawline, very important. I have a very angular face, so I like to soften that. I want to give the illusion that my face is more oval. And then I also want to put a little bit on the bottom of my chin. The bottom of my chin is, is not asymmetric. It's really off balance. So I use the contour to really try to give the illusion that it, it's proportioned right. And then of course you want to get under that chin area especially as we get older. And then I do a little contouring on the sides of my nose. I, I don't have a large nose, so I've never been a complainer of my nose. I, I actually like my nose, but at the end, the tip, it is not straight. So that is why I choose to contour my nose to give it more of a straighter look, especially down at the end. You can kind of see that it's not perfectly straight. I, and it kind of, I almost have like a little bit of a ball on one side, which makes it look offset. So it just helps to contour. And then I do underneath as well. Definitely do not need to do this. And definitely, if it's if you're just getting ready for work, you would you would eliminate so many steps. Just adding a little bit more with the other side of that brush to contour that nose so it looks more straight at the bottom, giving it more of a tip. So this is a double-ended brush. And then I always add a little bronzer just below my lower lip line. It just gives a nice fuller pout. Again, you wouldn't do this for every day, but if you're going out, these little added details, or if you're going to be in film or photography, these little details can make a big difference. Also adding a little bit of the bronzer shade to my ears. You just want everything to go. And then bring that bronzer shade down the neckline as well. We're going to move on to blush, and I'm going to use this beautiful palette by Jouer. This is very cool toned, but I will link a warm toned one as well. I use both of these colors. I go with the darker one first. Love blush. I believe blush placement really has a lot to do with your face shape. I have a narrow face, so I really focus on more of the apple area of my cheeks and you want to keep it high, especially the older you get. You don't want to go too low. We don't want to drag down, we want to lift. So I'm just starting with the apples and then just blending it back towards the hairline. You really want to blend that blush, blend it towards the hairline, but keep the focus of the color towards the apples. And then I always add a little bit just because it looks natural. Now I take a fluffier brush and I go into the lighter shade, which has a little bit of a highlighting effect to it, although it's not. It's not a highlighter, but it just has this beautiful effect. And I just kind of wisp that over top of what I just did. I just love it. And this product is discontinued, but it's very cool toned and it's a blushy highlight. I use a fan brush and I use this like a highlighter, but boy, is it just the pop for me. Now again, this wouldn't be a shade you would use for a warm tone person. I believe this product is discontinued, but I will look and see if I can find it on eBay or someplace like that.
Moving on to another highlighter, because this is an evening look, I'm moving on to the Laura Mercier in 01. I really don't use this a lot. When you have oilier skin, you tend to not use a lot of shimmer, but I'm using the same brush that I used for my under eye powder, which I don't typically do that. I have a different brush I typically use, but I couldn't find it. So I will make sure that I brush this off on my rag so that no shimmer stays on it, but just touching those tops of the cheekbones just for a little added look for the nighttime. Then I take my fan brush just to blend it all together. So basically those two highlights are going to blend together. It's a nice look. I love a fan brush. You wanna just blend everything, blend, blend, blend. Taking the NARS Eda brush, I'm just going to enhance that contour that I did earlier and a little bit on top and the chin. And just, just enhancing everything where the contour is. Love that brush, I've had it for years. Now I'm gonna go back in and curl my eyelashes a second round. This is why I have to clean my eyelash curler with, mas with dried mascara on it because I do curl my eyelashes later on. I always have. I've, I've never lost any lashes, folks. <laughs> I know what some people are thinking. And you just really wanna curl them. Pinch and curl, I have no problems. Because my mascara's been dry so long, and again, I have poker straight lashes, and then, I, and then I do apply another coat of mascara, the Tarte Lights Camera Lashes, my favorite. I think the real key though is waiting till a little bit later to curl them. Now again, for a typical daytime look, if you're going to the office, you wouldn't be doing all these steps. Who has time, right? Who has time? I do love dabbling in makeup though. Moving on to a pointy Q-tip that I keep in a recycled Hollywood tapes container. I am going to dip this in a little bit of eye makeup remover just to clean up my eyebrows from any powder, any foundation that got on them. I wanna clean them up. You can see in, in my eyebrow hair that there is makeup in there, so I wanna get that out. But I love to use a pointy Q-tip really to get in there. Moving on to actually doing the brows, I'm going to start with my Benefit Precisely My Brow in shade, I believe it's 3.5. First, I'm going to brush the brow up. And then I'm really only using this pencil it's a retractable on the bottom part of the eyebrow. And I do have a recent tutorial where I walk you through step-by-step step how I do my brows. Again, we really want to lift. We wanna make sure we're going in an upward motion. Just creating kind of a straight line with the brow you'll see here. Up and outward, just really that base. And then I'm going to go into my Anastasia Brow Powder Duo with an angle, a, a double-ended brush. It's an angle on one side and a spoolie on the other. This is going to be a brown tone shade. Again, pay attention to your tones. If you're a warm tone, you wouldn't use this one because these are cool tones. And I use both. And now I work on the top part of the brow Still working in an upward, up and out motion. And you want to fill in any of the bare spots, which I do have some. You can see right here that I need to really fill that, that bare spot going to where it tapers off like the tail and really blend. You wanna make sure you're really blending and work your way outward. Yeah, now I need to kind of create that tail because I really don't, it's kind of bare there. So we're creating the tail. Now 
same with this side. You'll see that there's a bare spot there. So we're gonna have to fill that in. So working up and out. And I will gradually go into creating that tail. If you want more details, watch the tutorial. I'll have it linked below. Lots of blending. Up, 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 out, 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 lift, 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 lift. <laughs> Going back to the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette, I want to do my highlight, and I just use that vanilla shade. You can use any vanilla shade in any palette. Any will work. Just stick with matte, especially if you're older. And be careful with your highlight as well. You don't want to drag it down. You really want to go in that up and out motion. Just right there. You won't see me come down. I stay going upward. Blend, blend, blend. Yeah, I don't do any shimmer up here. Now with a really fluffy brush, I'm gonna go back into that mid-tone shade because I want to blend it all together. All the brushes will be linked. So you can see I'm doing the windshield wiper motion. I'm merging those colors all together. Blending is so key when it comes to your eye makeup. And again, anyone could wear this shade and most palettes have it. It's just that middle, middle brownie type color, mid-tone, nothing too dark in matte. Now just a little bit more of a definer brush, really working everything in, creating that, that shape that I'm going for. That's the other thing, you really have to pay attention to what shape looks best on you. We're gonna just deepen that dark brown shade in the outer part, just deepen it a little bit. Yeah, looking really good. Love this eye makeup look. This would be a very common look for me for filming, except I typically would wear a mat on the lid unless I was going out at night. Now we have a little pencil brush. We're going to go into that mid-tone brown shade again, and we're going to apply it on the lower lash line. Again, no mascara down there and no eyeliner below that line. Just lightly with that mid-tone. You don't want to go too heavy here. And you could forego this. During the daytime, I probably would. Or if I were going for an office look, I wouldn't probably put anything at the bottom. And I'm just kind of fanning it out. Again, trying to get that up and out look to, to, to add some lift. Using a very detailed little concealer brush by e.l.f., I go into MAC Shroom. This is a highlight, so there is some shimmer to it. Not a lot, though. It's more of a satiny shimmer. And I just go into that inner corner. Now, again, only for a nighttime look. You don't have to do all these added details for every day. This is really the vamped up look if you're going to be in photos or film, or if you're going out and you really just want to play with your makeup and dabble. Love to do it. Yep, just that inner, inner corner. I've used MAC Shroom since I was in my 20s. I've never used an inner shadow besides MAC Shroom. Now I'm going to line my upper waterline. And I'm just gonna kind of extend it out slightly. I always line, and you can see I'm pushing up in just that part of my my lashes. I don't push up as much in the front part. Now I'm just lining that whole inner. No liner on the outer, just on the inner. See how it just deepens that? I, I will always do this, no matter what look I'm going for. This is a step that I would never skip. 
and I just slightly, and see, push it up, merge, them, merge it into those, those lashes, just on the outer part, and then bring it all the way in. If you're new to this, it'll feel weird at first, but you'll get used to it, but what a game changer. One of my favorite makeup steps. Now I'm going to still use that eyeliner pencil with just a little bit of a angled brush. Because it's a night look, we're gonna add a little bit more lift. Going out with a little bit of a cat there, just slightly. Up and out. Again, just something I would add in for a nighttime look. And then just kind of merging and pushing it into the lash lines on the outer part, just to deepen it. Add some depth there. Now we're going to go in, and this is just for nighttime or photos, we're gonna just go on the inner rim with this beautiful shade by NYX. It's part of the faux black collection, and I believe this is burnt sienna. Boy, do I love this. This wouldn't be for everyone, and you could go without it. You may prefer my look without it. Everyone has a different preference, and again, wouldn't do this for daytime. I took my teeth whitening trays out. Now we're gonna move on to lips, which is always the last step. I'm taking the other side of that pointy Q-tip and I'm cleaning up my lips because I get makeup on those as well. So you can see I'm scrubbing off, scrub, scrub, all that makeup. Moving on to lip liner, I love a pencil that you can sharpen. I'll put my sharpener in the drop down box. I'm going to line my lips with Palladio Rose, a favorite, very affordable. I love this pencil because it's it's not super soft, which is not, I don't want a soft pencil for lining the outer part of my lips. So I use two lip liner pencils and this is always the one that I use to define my lips, to trace my lips, the outer part only. Sometimes I'll fill in with this, but I have other other lip pencils that I like to fill in with that are more creamier and softer to keep my lips hydrated. But for lining, very important to have this one. Now for filling in my lips, I love the Huda Beauty Lip Contour and I love Muse and Trophy Wife. Those are my favorite colors. This is Muse, very cool tone, so be careful. This wouldn't be for everyone, but there are so many shades, so many shades. Definitely something for everyone. You're gonna find more warm tone shades in everything than you are cool tone. But I fill in with this pencil because it's creamy. It keeps my lips moisturized and it keeps my lipstick on. We're gonna move into an all time favorite. This is just a perfect lipstick shade for me. MAC Craving. It's not gonna be a nude lip. Mm. I don't know about nude lips. <laughs> all have a personal preference. Well, we all have a different, different idea of what is nude. If it's the color of your skin, no. Mm -mm. It just doesn't look natural. I like using a brush to apply my lipstick because I feel that the staying power is so much stronger. And I like my lipstick to stay put, especially if I'm going to be dining out, which I will be tonight, and having drinks. Actually celebrating my oldest daughter's graduation from grad school with her master's in social work. It's a girl's night out with some of the sisters. 
not my sister's, my daughter's. And a little, little gloss by Huda Beauty, love this. Lip strobe in angelic, so pretty. Just on the bottom and the center. Beautiful shade. Warm tone and cool tone beauties can wear this, this lip. Okay, before I end, let's go over a couple of things. Now again, the look that I shared with you today is a filming day and I'm also going out. So this is about as dramatic as I would get, but you can definitely scale this back. Just take whatever I shared with you today and see how it applies for you. One of the ways to definitely scale it back, and even if you are going more dramatic, is not putting the liner in your inner lower rim. Most people don't do that. I just like the look on me but that is definitely something that you do not have to do. The other thing is no shadow on the bottom of your lower lash line. Definitely just leave that bare, only work off the top. And you don't have to do as many steps as I did, especially for a daytime look. And if you're going to the office, you don't need to contour, none of that stuff. So just bear in mind that my look today is what suits me and serves me when I'm going out. So it's kind of the bells and whistles, which is what I do typically if I'm going out or going to film. The other thing that I mentioned earlier is the importance of making sure that you are choosing colors that serve your skin tone. So important. I will give an example because I'm cool toned and you'll see that the blush that I use today is very cool toned. And if you can't pick up on it, it's really easy to do once you put a warmer shade with it. Now, believe it or not, this is a warmer shade. It's called Berry, but it's kind of neutral. And this shade actually looks really great on me, but it's definitely not cool tone. So a warm or cool toned person could probably get away with this. But do you see the difference? Clearly, you can tell this is warm. These are cool tones. There's a beautiful palette of this, this particular one in warm tones. So I would get what's gonna work for you. Don't, don't buy all the colors that I use. If you're lighter skinned, light hair, light eyes, the colors that I share aren't going to flatter you. It's so important, it's often a mistake that many women make. Now the eyeshadow palette that I use today, the Too Faced Chocolate Bar, Shades like this right here that I used, that will work for everyone. And I also think that's a great shade to go on your lid. I wouldn't wear any shimmer for daytime or for the office, nothing shimmer, no highlight, no shimmer on the lid. Use all matte shades, especially as you're getting older. I honestly do not use shimmer at all unless I'm going to go out in the evening, but typically I'm all matte, especially as I get older. And these shades are in many palettes. Do not go out and buy a new palette. All you have to do is look for mid-tone shades that are matte. It does not matter. They can also fall in the more mauve or plummy shades if that's flattering for you. I don't, I just wouldn't go out. We all have palettes that will work. We really do. Trying to save you a little bit of money here. Very important with your foundation to get the proper shade as well. One of the things that I love about the Estee Lauder Double Wear is it is offered in so many shades and typically there's, there's two numbers and a letter on the bottom. Mine is 3N1 Ivory Beige. The N stands for neutral and typically with my foundation, I am more of a neutral toned versus cool tone, and I'm definitely not warm toned. So if you're cool undertone, look for cools or neutrals, and if it's a cool, it will be the letter C. W will be for warm. So again, if you're cool toned, look for a C or an N and test them out. If you're warm tone, you could be an N for neutral or a W for warm, but don't venture out. Typically, it's just not going to match your skin tone good enough. So foundation is really important. Anything that's a color really is important. Lips. My lips are cool tone today. They're it's a berry shade and it's very cool tone. So if you're warmer skin tone, you can do something this, this depth, but you want it to be in your color family. It's, and actually all of the products that I, I shared with you today 
are offered in more warm tone shades than cool tones. So when you click on the link, let's say for my lip color or, or my lip pencil, make sure you're choosing this, the tone that would work for you, not necessarily the same color as me. A couple of products that I want to share with you that I always have on hand when I go out. The first one is Bosha Blotting Linens. I never leave home without these. If I have makeup on, especially if I'm going out in the evening, this pack is looking pretty rough, but these are great. I buy them all the time for my girls. I put them as gift toppers on top of Christmas gifts and birthday gifts as well. And then the other thing is my NARS translucent crystal light reflecting setting powder pressed. I have one, two, and three because I cannot be without this. So I keep a couple, because I've hit pan, I'll always purchase new ones, but I keep a couple of these in my makeup arsenal and then I always have one on the go with a puff pad. It's really just great to blot any excess oil and then to apply this. Great for photography. There is little crystals in it, but there is no shimmer. Believe me, no shimmer whatsoever. I've used this product for years. So really that's, uh, that's everything. Well, there you have it. The going out look. Thank you for joining me for this get ready with me makeup tutorial. Don't forget everything is in the description box below or on the corresponding blog post. Thanks for joining me. Have a fantastic weekend. Maybe you can jazz up and do this look sometime this weekend. Happy Mother's Day to everyone as well.